All right, here we go. Here's the second uh, episode of Lighting Director's Commentary. My guest today is Jeff Waffle from Umbreeze McGee. How's it going, Jeff? It is going great. Thanks for having me on your uh, big program, Luke. So this is the first song of the second set, and I point that out because I try to have kind of a build thematically over the course of the night. There's certain cues that I try not to ever go to in the first set, and then the idea is that you know the show builds in intensity. The only problem with that is that the set list is different every night. So what happens if the band comes out and opens with a song that they typically would close the second set with? You're kind of stuck, but all of us improv guys kind of deal with the same thing. Yeah, you got to save your tricks. So now I know, okay, the gloves are off. I can kind of do whatever I want here. There's a little bit more of a relaxed vibe. The crowd has also been, you know, settling into the Lubricated. venue. Lubricated. Lubricated. You know, they just stepped outside for set break or whatever they're into. No judgment. But uh, I, I, I kind of always feel there's a little bit of different vibe uh, second set. Or a major, majorly different vibe. So are you, do you have a look ready right now? Like, uh, do you I, know what look you're going to go to? I do. It's probably not always the same. I know... This is uh, what we call DBK, Der Bluten Cotton, which never heard a member of Humphreys say. We just say DBK. I know it's going to be kind of a hot look, but it could be a different hot look night to night. Um, and there's obviously lots of blue in that, so it could be arguably ambivalent. So here I'm on the right-hand screen. What I'm doing there is I'm selecting different page views, and each page view has 10 cues, and I try to lay them out on the board left to right in a way that makes sense to me with more of the bright looks on the left-hand side and more of the pretty purple-blue looks on the right. So now Joel comes in, he sings, Brendan and him are trading uh, lyrics here, or lines, and so I try to light them up pretty straightforward. That was one of the songs that took me a long time to learn because there's a lot of different sections. I also picked this song because you can't really see him, but our esteemed lighting crew chief Louie is to my left. You can see him a little bit later on. And the Cap Theater has video projection on the wall. Now, I would never use video projection just because it's not part of our show. And in order to run it, you have to rely on a house projectionist. And so, you know, I'm very protective of hitting every note perfectly. And it's impossible to have a total stranger who's never been to an Humphreys McGee show hit all those changes. So, but you also have to utilize the technology that's there. And <laughs> The Capitol Theater owner, Peter Shapiro, a good friend of ours, good friend of the band, he is very into like the technology that he wants to use, so you do it for Pete. It's like the kind of thing, any other venue in the world that's like, hey, we want you to use this, you'd be like, no way, man, that's not our show, but for Pete, uh, you know, he invested, I, I think he had Mark Brickman actually design that video projection. That uh, Mark Brickman was the lighting designer for Pink Floyd, for those David of you, Gilmore, yeah. David Gilmore, and basically everyone. So you'll see in a little bit when we get to the improv section, I start calling cues to Louie, and Louie is on a headset calling the cues, then relaying them to the guy backstage, which is something that's totally outside of our comfort zone. The, the biggest thing for me when I do lighting is this is all muscle memory. So you're, you see, I'm not even looking at the stage. The stage is like a, an afterthought because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing. So to add in another production element of that and have to communicate it verbally is a challenge. So this time around, Chris Myers comes in. It took me probably five years to figure out because there's so much going on. I'm like, oh, I should light up Chris only on the third verse. Uh, I feel like those little subtleties are... There was another section of this song that I apparently struggled with for years. I didn't realize it, but one of the things that Umphreys does is they write really complex time signatures into their songs, but when executed correctly, it sounds like it's in 4-4. Four, four. So this part coming up right here. You can watch my mouth move. I'm counting it. One, two, three, four. Next time it comes around, it's only three. One, two, three. It, it skips a beat. If I don't say it out loud, I forget. One, two, three, four. Brian Stasek, our bass player, pulled me aside on the tour bus one night at about three in the morning. He's like, dude, that last section's in three. You get it wrong every time. Touche, boss. I'll never get it wrong again. It's quite a, quite a learning curve for Dumfries. And by the way, that doesn't happen very often that the band members pull me aside. It's probably happened twice in 10 years, but I appreciate it. There was another time where uh, the song is Rocker 2. There's a part in the beginning where Jake and Brendan are trading licks, and I couldn't figure out what the time signature was. And I, after you know five years, I asked Brendan, I was like, what, what time signature is that in? He's like, oh, it's not in a time signature. I just, it's just a visual cue. 
I said, oh, okay. He's like, but you can't see because it's just our eyes. So now he kind of telegraphs it. All right, so here we're coming to, uh, I think there's a big peak here. So I'm, ri I'm going to a high position. I went to white by accident there. I'd rather go to white on the big hit right here. If you're not a big Humphreys McGee fan, this up until this point, this has all still been composed. There, there hasn't been really a note of improv. I mean, maybe here or there. But. So, well, like, with the cue you just hit, what was the thought process that got you to pressing that cue? What, the big white one? No, just now. When you, when you blacked out and hit a new cue. Just trying to get to something that was going to be in purple, and I'm probably going to bring up a big uh, look with a bunch of cone gobos, because I know it's a pretty section. And that's something I do a lot, you know, to kind of reset. All right, so Brendan here plays this riff, and then Andy comes in with the... Uh, the wind chimes. I don't know if that's the technical term, but the chimes. And I just looked over to my left. That's Louis. I said, hey, get ready. Here comes the improv. Tell your guy on the head, you know, the poor guy. Was, <laughs> we were just peppering him all night. We're like, no, I said slower, faster. So here I told him, get ready. Stand by for the video projectionist. Here's our pretty look. And now this is the first open section of the song. So now you can see me. I'm going to start leaning over to Louis and giving him instructions. And we, you know, I had the foresight to say, hey, we need a camera for the video projection. But there literally was no physical place where we could mount a camera to see it because we were underneath the balcony. Yeah, I was going to say, too bad we don't have three cameras on this. So now we just rolled in the video projection. I said, hey, that looks good. And I, I remember specifically, I think the first night, this is why I wanted to record this on the second night, the first night saying, you know, we, we need to approach this. We need everything to be real, really slow. We want everything moving very slowly because I, I feel like with most production, yeah, I keep doing that with my hand. Slow down. Tell him to slow it down. And then he goes over the radio, the projection. So he's, he's slowing the, the rate of the projections down. Yes. Like yeah. if you think about, uh, you know, water. Because I tried to go for a lot of organic things because there's a lot of different video cues to choose from. And some of them look a little too, like, Tron, a little too cartoony or or uh, purposely too psychedelic. You know, I think like like raindrops, if you capture them in the right way, can be way more psychedelic than like some Paisley yeah, some bullshit. Windows screensaver. <laughs> yes, exactly. We're trying not to look like a screensaver. But I have no idea what I'm saying to him there. I just, I can see it in my face that this is like the most stressful thing I've ever done, but yet the most fun I've also, it's, it's such a weird balance. I'm sure you can relate to that. Oh yeah, absolutely. The other thing that I see here, and I, I've watched this a couple times, I, like there's a long stretches of time where I'm not like looking at the show, and I think that's that's important for aspiring young LBs. You want to know the music so cold that it's like the last thing on your mind. It's just ingrained in your DNA. Like I know I can hear the little nuances of the way they improvise. I can tell when they're going to come to the next big. Yeah, well, and you probably know what look you have up currently. It's not like it yeah. surprised itself. You know? So you can see my left hand here. Those are color wipes, or they were. And on my right hand, these are uh, what we call flash buttons. So if I hold down the button, it goes to white. If I let go, it goes back to whatever color I was previously in. And the reason I run it that way is I've literally been, you know, we talk about muscle memory. I've been executing cues like that for over 20 years because when I first was using regular park hands, it's the same gesture. So I wanted to kind of keep that familiarity. So I have on my right hand there, those are all colors. My left hand there, those are my intensity faders. So if I was going to black out the show, I would take those down. I think it's funny that I like, am taking this so seriously as if in the grand scheme of life, this is somehow important. But at the moment, there's nothing more important. But looking at it now, it's kind of funny. So at this point, I have no idea what's coming next. I know we're in a mellow section, we're in an open section, but the band members may be talking to each other on a on their uh, in-ear monitors. They have a talkback mics that I can hear. I'm wearing in-ear monitors buried somewhere underneath all that hair. And they may be saying something like, hey, let's do that A-B section we worked on earlier. In which case, I believe that would be denoted as a Jimmy Stewart which is that you can Google that, but that's the term we give to our open improvs. Then there's also jazz odysseys, and I'm sure Humphreys fans will email me 
but I still don't really know the difference. I think a Jazz Odyssey goes on maybe a little longer or something. Jimmy Stewart's maybe tend to be pre-written sections that they'll work on during rehearsal that day. And it's not, they're not practicing how to improv. They're just saying, this is the A section. It's going to be in a minor key. And then the B section is going to be double time in a major key. It's that, those are the only parameters. But it, it allows them all to kind of move seamlessly. So now I'm kind of trying to get a feel of like, where are we going to go with this thing, guys? And I'm trying to create as many different pulses. Um, so for example, you see the towers behind the band in that kind of ghosting white pulse. When everything's clicking perfectly, I, I try to have the tempo of that be following the bass, for example, and then have the tempo of the rest of the rig following maybe the hi-hat. It doesn't always happen, but every now and then you get three or four different attributes matching different members of the band, and that's always kind of the goal. So now I'm saying, okay, I'm going to do my projection on the back wall with my lights. Let's get the video projection going. And one of the things we did between night one and night two is we went through and we picked out video projections that were, I don't know the, the right way to say this, but the entire venue was all one screen. So if we're looking at an image of the ocean, the entire room would be that picture, that full-size picture of the ocean, because there's multiple projectors. So there's certain cues that they have where each projector outputs, so you'd see like six different ocean looks, or that's probably you just that. just try to stitch them all together. Right? Stitch, yeah, I like it when like you look like you're in a omni dome of, you know, like if you went to go see Everest at the Omniplex. So I don't know what we're doing, but I, I would assume it would be some slow moving kind of dripping watery, you know, I think, like I said, nature can be way more psychedelic than people trying to be psychedelic. But I grew up on Cape Cod, so I may be biased. So you'll see here, it, it gets, it starts to get a little bit more intense. And I, I'll be doing this thing with my left hand, which is like what the uh, television producers do to say, you know, keep going, we have time to fill. I, I, apparently, I think that made me feel comfortable because I, there, there it is again. I probably do it 20 times, and I'm probably just telling Louie, keep doing what you're doing, which is redundant because they're not going to stop until I say stop. But I, I need some semblance of a routine here because I'm way out of my routine. And that's, that's kind of why I picked this song because I'm way out of my element here. Like to add a whole other dimension of like having to communicate. Oh, yep, keep going. Turn your hand. That'll, that'll help, Jeff. Do you think overall that the show benefited from it? Oh, absolutely. But it, it it takes me way out of my comfort zone, which is a good thing. I mean, it's, a, it's good to challenge yourself. But if we toured with video projection, it would be part of my muscle memory. There's that hand gesture again. Uh, but the fact that we do it once a year means that it's like, it just forces you to do something different. It would be like if you, uh, let's see if I can come up with a metaphor here. I was going to say, it would be like if you played piano your entire life and then suddenly, you know, you, you had to play like with a third arm, <laughs> play a synthesizer, I don't know. So here, this is a full rig dimmer chase. And, and like I said, at this point, I'm kind of on autopilot with the light show, which I don't, I don't love to have to do that, but I only have one brain and I'm trying to direct the video projections. Um, well, and you've also done this kind of this kind of jam a thousand times Liter point. literally probably over a thousand times not this specific song but yeah over the course of I think I've been doing lights now for more than 20 years and just like they don't have to think about every note that they it's play. the exact same yeah. thing yes it's the exact same thing as a musician not having to think about it and, and you hear that in any art form you say you hear these people like Carlos Santana or Tran Anastasio these people talk about like the goal is always to get to a point where you're not thinking which I feel like I get to that point on a good night, not every night. But that's why the, the video projection thing is such a challenge is because by definition, I have to be thinking about a totally related but kind of separate media, medium. And so it definitely keeps me on my game here. And I always, I always tell Louie, he's the sweetest guy. I always say to him, please don't take it personally if I seem like I'm yelling at you. I'm just in the moment. I'm not yelling at you. I'm not mad. I'm just, I'm trying to get my thoughts in my head into your head into the guy backstage's head instantaneously <laughs> so i always go out of my way to like high five him after a big jam you'll see i fist bump him look positive reinforcement like you're doing great man <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> leadership skills and the, the video projectionist here at the cap was a guy i'd never worked with before i've worked with the regular guy quote unquote the, the normal full-time guy 
uh, a bunch of times, and he's really good. He's very intuitive. This guy I'd never worked with before, and um, he was he was really good to work with. The first night, we had to kind of work our, our communication, but I felt like we sat down the second day and we, we went over it, and we really gelled. And now we're back into another compose section. So when when it goes to that movement effect, is that all built into one cue? Like yellow, slow moving effect? Um, you'll see my right hand there. I'm actually holding down the yellow. This yeah. this cue is more of an orange. Okay, so there's a cue, but in the cue, it's it's rotating with the movement effect, and it's only yellow because you're holding down the flash. Right. Yeah, I got it. It's one of those things, like, I have so many cues. When I wrote that cue, for some reason, I put in orange from the color wheel, and I just never changed it. But a lot of times when I go to it, I'll press, without getting too technical here, for my mom, who has no idea what we're talking about. Yeah. And it's half of our audience. No, I don't know. <laughs> just kidding. That's okay. That was a dig on me, not on you. No, that's true. But uh, when you, because the color wheel doesn't respond the same way, yeah. if I want to change colors a lot, there's a little bit of latency because of the physicality of the color wheel. So if I press that yellow, that's a CMY. And now we're starting to... Cr this is still... I would consider this kind of... This isn't improv. I mean, it's improv, but the the section is constant in this song. Sure, it's generally the same. The progression is, yeah. yeah. So the, obviously the guitar solo is, is improv. And but, the individual but you notes... you know what to expect as a, from an intensity yeah, standpoint. There, yeah, there's a set number of measures here. The other part was what we would call open, where anything can happen. Um, and there'll probably be another open section, if I recall. But honestly, I, I can't keep... This song has just so many sections, it's hard sure, to know. Sure, But it looks like we're coming up to a big peak here. And I love that I look like Beyonce with the, uh, the, the fan in my hair <laughs> and the white light. <laughs> to, to, to clarify, only my... The movement of my hair reminds me of Beyonce, but I just... We call it the Beyonce fan. Yeah. Now I think we're gonna break it down again. Yep, and you see me frantically with my left hand. That's where I keep all my speed faders, so I, I can adjust. Oh, we're done. We're out of time. Look at that. Our apologies to Matt Damon. <laughs> Thank you for having me. We ran out of time. Sorry, Matt. We'll get you on next time.